heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is the topic. And um, this is also sometimes, well, abbreviated HIT, HIT. Uh, but in addition to heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, it's sometimes called HITT, uh, with the final T referring to thrombosis. And I'll get into the details of that. So, HIT, or H-I-T-T, -T, what's happening here? Well, basically, in a small percentage of people that are given heparin, very small, maybe 1%, that can lead to a low platelet, platelet count. And the term for low platelet count is thrombocytopenia decreased platelets. And the particular type of heparin, because there's different types, the type of heparin we're talking about is unfractionated heparin. Now, what happens is these platelets eventually they clump together. And because they clump together, this can lead to a paradoxical thrombosis. Because when you think of thrombocytopenia, you don't think of a blood clot, but in this case, it forms a, a blood clot thrombosis. And this thrombosis uh, can cause severe uh, problems. It can lead to uh, life-threatening occlusion if not treated in an appropriate amount of time. So why is this happening? Why does uh, this happen? Why does HIT happen? Hyperinduced thrombocytopenia and thrombosis. The reason is because you have these antibodies that develop and these they're called HIT antibodies and these antibodies are basically responsible for the thrombocytopenia and thrombosis. And in addition to the low platelet count you can also see skin lesions and you might also see some systemic reactions such as chills and fever so the way to uh, diagnose this, obviously, is by doing a CBC and looking at the platelet count. Uh, but um, the treatment is to discontinue the heparin and to give a alternative anticoagulant to help uh, treat the thrombosis. So that's a quick rundown of HIT. Um, let's take a look at a couple of clinical vignettes. 70-year-old woman with aortic sclerosis is admitted with chest pain. An infarct is ruled out by cardiac enzymes, but the patient has recurrent symptoms when weaned off heparin. On hospitalization day two, she has right arm pain, absent brachial pulse on the right, and a cold distal right arm. Her hematocrit is 34, platelets are 30,000. Her partial thromboplastin time is 64, which of the following is most likely cause of the patient's absent brachial pulse. Well, in this scenario, what's happened is the patient has been given heparin, and this has caused the antibodies uh, that can happen in a small percentage of cases to develop. And as a result, she's developed a thrombosis where the, when the platelets clump together, and that's why she has this absent brachial pulse. And this is a medical emergency, and they're asking what is the reason she has this, and the answer is because she was placed on heparin. Next question. A 72-year-old female with painful swollen right leg is admitted to the hospital to rule out DVT. An infusion of heparin has begun with the goal of maintaining the patient's activated partial thromboplastin time at 1.5 times the normal value. A diagnosis of DVT is confirmed and on the second day, and it is decided that the patient should receive long-term anticoagulation therapy with heparin. Which of the following conditions is the patient at increased risk of developing if heparin therapy is continued for 14 days? Well, the most common um, heparin-induced uh, thrombocytopenia um, is the most common heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. And... Um, that um, is essentially all the question is asking, so the choice would be E.